Hey, Dad, can we get the MP7? We don't need an MP7. We have one home. Man. <sighs> What's going on everybody? This is Brian here with Texas Gun Experience. And if you ever wanted to own a H&K MP7, well, too bad, because HK, quite frankly, hates you and the American market and seeing a civilian MP7 might be a long time away. So this video is actually not about the MP7. So this is who your girlfriend tells you not to worry about. And then there's you, the kel CP33. Now, the CP actually stands for a competition pistol, and the 33, meaning 33 uh, magazine capacity, CP33. Now, this is a 22 long rifle uh, handgun. Now, we kind of went a little overboard with this, and while we have MP7s here available to rent, well, this is the MP7 we have at home. Now, this is kind of just a fun build, and almost uh, a meme gun at this point, because we have more in accessories than we actually have what the, and what the gun actually costs. But the CP33 is actually a pretty nice firearm uh, in itself. So let's talk about the gun. Let's talk about what we did to this one specifically. And starting from the front, we did put a dead air uh, muzzle device. Now we did do the key micro, meaning it just uh, takes the smaller pistol mounts. So we're able to put that on there, have a quick detach with the dead air can. Uh, this is just a Ghost 45 that we're using on there. Uh, with the wipes, it's pretty quiet. It's a half by 28 thread pitch, so there's plenty of muzzle devices available out there for the firearm. Now these come standard with fiber optic sights and the rear is actually adjustable. So uh, as a handgun itself, they're actually very nice and easy to pick up, uh, especially when you're out there you know, with any type of lighting conditions, those uh, fiber optics glow pretty well. And if they ever get damaged, they're easy to replace. So kel actually markets this as a competition ready pistol. In the 22 long rifle pistol space, you know, Ruger kind of dominates that. So they wanted to come out with something that could be both accurate, lightweight, and could hold a lot of rounds. And that's kind of the birth of the CP33. Uh, it does have a little bit longer barrel here, and it is a, quite frankly, a larger uh, pistol or handgun. Um, but it's all polymer construction and even some of the internals, and we'll get to some of the accessories too, but some of the internals are even 3D printed. Uh, we're starting to see a lot more 3D printed parts in and on firearms nowadays. So it's kind of cool to see. It's kind of the way of the future. So uh, the CP33 has a 3D printed uh, kind of like a little buffer uh, in the uh, behind the bolt here. So uh, full length uh, 1913 Picatinny up top. So if you want to mount objects, you can. Uh, again, 33 round capacity. It is fully ambidextrous as well too. So there is a safety selector on both the left hand and right hand side. It's really easy to engage with the thumb, very similar to AR-15 style controls. The trigger is surprisingly very good. Even though this is a you know all polymer construction, uh, it doesn't feel too spongy and actually it's quite short and crisp uh, with an audible reset. So you'd be really surprised uh, firing this, how good the triggers actually are uh, when we're talking kind of a budget or you know entry level pricing firearm. So some of the accessories uh, we don't want to skip over and some of it is because more of why not, uh, but they do have some uh, actual worth as well too. So, you know, the lights, whatever, it actually mates up pretty well right in front of the optic here. It's a TLR1, thousand lumen uh, light from Streamlight. They're really rugged, really good on uh, handguns and even have uh, some rifle applications. Uh, this works pretty well here to where you can actually use your offhand and uh, actuate those rocker switches. The Vortex Spark AR uh, was just one of those ones we had sitting on the side, so threw it on there and actually mates up quite well. So having that kind of that AR uh, offset actually mates up to, if you're to use a brace uh, and shoulder it all, actually gives you really good kind of hide over bore 
and uh, sight picture shot alignment. Um, just quick snap up with that red dot. So that's really nice. They're also kind of ruggedized. They have that rubber coating on it. Just a simple red dot. That's all you really need with this. Uh, there are, again, plenty of aftermarket options nowadays for uh, because of 3D printing. So the CP33, there's actually a, you know, it's even though it's kind of a niche market, there's a lot of guys out there creating different things like, you know, angled foregrips, uh, foregrips that actually hold a spare magazine. Um, this one is, they call it not a vertical foregrip, uh, angle grip. And on both sides, there's some picker out here. So if you wanted to add, you know, lights, lasers, whatever, uh, it's there. The CP33 does come, you can't really see it on this, but it does come with M-Lock as kind of like a front rail there. So if you wanted to add any M-Lock accessories, you're able to do so. So again, it's kind of like a large handgun. Uh, it has some characteristics of some rifles or subguns, uh, but it is 100% a pistol. On the back, it's kind of the uh, the showstopper and you know what everyone's really looking forward to when they want to build one of these you know poor man MP7s is the Ferrotech brace. So this is a full carbon fiber, two arms here, uh, really simple to uh, engage and it does lock out uh, arm brace. So uh, slides in, slides out, keeps it real compact. So if you want to throw this in a bag or backpack, really easy to do and it slides right out. Uh, however, that's about half the cost of the gun. So, you know, you are going to start adding a lot of things in here. So if you're going to do a build like this, it's definitely not, you know, because you're trying to save some money. Uh, you just mostly want to stunt on the gram. Uh, the magazines. So that's one thing worth noting. The magazines come from the factory with 33 round capacity. And you see on this one, we also have the kel extended mag well, our base plate on this one as well uh, with some type of 3D printed kind of pull handle there. Uh, the magazine with the kel extended plate gives you 50 rounds of 22 long rifle in one magazine. So you keep one in the gun, you know, an extra spare mag or two on you, that's a lot of rounds you can put down range uh, in a short amount of time. Loading the magazines and the way the magazines work is very important to talk about because how you get so many rounds in that magazine. Now, most magazines that we're used to dealing with are either single stack, meaning each round's right on top of each other, they're double stack, meaning they're kind of staggered down the magazine, but this is quad stack. So imagine you just take two double stack magazines and put them together. They even have a little divider plate right in the middle there uh, that you know, visually it's really able, uh, it's easy to see uh, how they do it. So you have a quad stack magazine. Now, while we've had great success with this thing, you know, feeding and running reliably, which is kind of weird to say for 22, uh, that doesn't mean that it doesn't uh, need to be loaded carefully. So an important note about that quad stack magazine, while it does work, uh, it's not without fault. The magazines need to be loaded very specifically in order to not create jams. So on a 22, it is kind of a rimmed cartridge back there, meaning at the back of the, the bullet or the case itself, there's a rim. If those rims and those rounds aren't stacked up accordingly, uh, and it's kind of one right in front of the other. If one gets stuck behind it, you're gonna cause a jam because that round isn't gonna be able to feed because it's hitting the rim of the cartridge in front of it. So you can either load them by hand, which can be tedious and lining those up. You really wanna make sure that again, each round's in front of the other ones or kel even offers them uh, on their website, but there is the uh, just American Speed Loaders makes a speed loader for it. So it's real simple. You put the magazine in, you drop around uh, into the back of it and just push the mag down and it automatically loads that, staggering those in the correct position. So that's definitely worth the investment of purchasing if you're gonna shoot this a lot. And it also makes reloading, you know, 30 to 50 round magazines a lot less tedious. So it's really important to note because Seeing that quad load, uh, quad stack mag can really kind of just look like Jam City. If you load them right though, it actually functions quite well. So speaking of ammo, now, you know, 22 isn't known to be the most uh, reliable. It's, uh, it's an inexpensive, it's a great cartridge. Uh, there's many uses for it and there's many different uh, applications and types of ammo that you can get for 22, which makes it a very desirable round. Mostly because, you know, you can buy a brick of 500 of them for fairly uh, inexpensive uh, prices. However, uh, to operate this gun and cycle it uh, appropriately, you need to run at least 40 grain 
uh, rounds. So 40 grains, hollow points, uh, round nose, whatever, it eats them up quite well. Uh, even suppressed, I mean, this thing goes right through it. So 22 is dirty though, so if you're gonna run a lot of suppressed uh, rounds through it, just make sure you keep your can clean and make sure, you know, this is, uh, there's no gas traveling in the system, but you're gonna get some extra gas coming from uh, behind that round. Uh, when that bolt opens up. So just keeping the gun clean, keeping it lubed will keep you running uh, without any extra, you know, malfunctions. So shooting it, it's a 22. It's super soft, uh, especially if you're going to, you know, put the, uh, a brace on it, whether you shoot it braced or if you shoulder it like a stock, it is very little recoil. So if you're a first time shooter getting into it, the CP33 is a great, you know, very um, non-intimidating option. Or if you're someone that truly is looking uh, to put a lot of rounds down range fast, but accurately, if it's for 22 competition, whatever, um, surprisingly, the gun is very accurate. You know, whether it's the long sight radius, the good trigger pull, or the little bit longer barrel, uh, it actually makes it for an accurate weapon. Uh, a lot of people don't think about, you know, kel as being kind of their first go-to, and understandably so. So kel is really a victim of coming up with some outside of the box ideas, some really cool space guns, but either you know have a disservice to them by not creating enough to fulfill demand, or maybe QC issues, whatever you know are are sometimes there. But um, the CP33 is one of those ones that seems to kind of always be floating around, where they're at least producing enough of them to where it's going to be a little bit more of a common use item. Um, again, this one hasn't had any issues and it's fed really well. You know, occasionally you'll get some type of weird feeding issue with 22 just being the nature of 22. Uh, but for a gun that's in that, you know, $500 price range, uh, and then, you know, of course, if you add a bunch of stuff to it, it's going to be probably double that. Uh, you know, it's actually a lot of fun, whether it's for plinking, if you want to get into competition, or if you just want to get someone into shooting the first time, highly recommend that CP33. So a lot of fun to shoot. It looks cool up on the wall. Uh, and again, you know, we have MP7 at home. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Make sure to follow us on social media. We're on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, we'll see you guys on the range.